Luann was in a bit of a funk. She didn't quite know or understand why. Maybe she was still hurting from the bombing at the little Richie's sixth birthday party last week. Maybe it was the news from her order this that her braces would have to stay on for another year. Winter break had just ended for her, so it could have been a typical case for the back-to-school blues. Whatever the case is, for the past few days, Luann just didn't feel like her perky, quirky self. She had to drag herself out of bed every morning, and her morning coffee did a little offset her feelings a little lethargically. Throughout the day, she, she seldom felt the urge to crack jokes and even spied out opportunities for puns. She just let them pass since that Monday off that, that week. She had been drifting through each day with the same nondescript hipped frown on her face, not pronounced enough to inspire concern from her friends and family, but certainly unbefitting for the jokester of the Loud House. Even the excitement of the Friday hardly did anything to lift her spirits, though that was par partially because she hadn't bothered to make any plans. Invitations from Giggles and Benny were to meet at the Flat Trace, maybe, and call the funny business were left unanswered. She knew that this kind of mood was unusual for her, but she couldn't muster up the motivation to ask anyone for help. She just didn't feel like it. Her family had finally started to take notice at dinner that Friday night. Lynn Sr. was weaving a fantastic tale about the time he accidentally fell into a lion pit at the zoo. A few people at the table were eyeing Luna expectantly, waiting for the moment that she would chime in, You're not lying to us, are you? But she never did. All she did was stare down at her fried fish, kneading it, kneading it with her fork and cutting it into smaller pieces. She had only eaten about a third of that point, while everyone else at the table had cleaned their plates. Are you okay, sweetie? Rita asked, as her forehead wrinkled with worry. You've barely touched her food. I'm fine, Luann said with a sigh, keeping her eyes pointed at her plate. I'm just not that hungry. She pushed her chair out of the table and stood up and shoved her plate away from her. Can I be excused? I got some homework to do. Lynn Sr. raised an eyebrow at her. Are you sure you don't want the rest of your meal? You could just wrap it in foil. I'll have it in lunch for lunch tomorrow. Without even bothering it for her parents to give her permission, she walked away from the table and started the trek across the living room. Technically, nothing she told them was a lie. Okay, the claim that she was fine was kind of doubtless, but she wasn't feeling hungry and she did have a homework assignment, especially her first assignment from her creative writing elective. Her teacher had given her a simple assignment. Write a story, any length, any format, any engineer. Just simple, open-ended assignment. Designed to let students introduce themselves and showcase their writing experience they have. As she walked into her room, she caught a glimpse of Mr. Coconuts in the sitting position of her dresser. Gosh, Mr. Coconuts. She hadn't touched him all week. And it was the exact spot where she left him after she came home from that gig at Richie's gig party. It made her feel a bit, a bit guilty, like she was taking an old friend for granted. But she played with him later. Now it was time to work. She plopped herself onto the bed and opened up her laptop and started a new Word document. Luann Loud, January 31st, Creative Writing, Short Story. I'll think of a better title later, she muttered to herself. For now, she just committed herself to the task of getting something, anything, writing down on paper. There was once was a girl named Kathy. She faced herself as a comedian, loved to tell jokes all the time, but none of her friends thought she was very funny. In fact, she hardly had friends at all. Luann's frown grew bigger and more pronounced. Her commitment was getting used to the assignment over as soon as possible. That meant she couldn't spare any time to filter herself. She just typed out the first thing that came to her head. Her words, as a result, were tinged with the glumness she has been feeling all week. Kathy really wanted to impress them, so she spent all week coming up with the perfect comedy routine. She ran jokes by her mom and dad and studied the most beloved comedic voices of all time and rehearsed everything she had wrote in the front of the mirror. She put everything she had to it and she told herself that there was no way it would bomb. So at the end of the week she invited all of her classmates to come and listen to her in the schoolyard at school. 
That afternoon, she stood in front of the whole class and recited her routine perfectly, without botching a single joke. She grimaced. Nobody thought it was funny, not even one bit. Her breathing accelerated as a lump started to swell in her gullet. She wanted to stop herself, but her fingers continued to type as they had a mind of their own. The other kids booed her and yelled at her and threw pencils and pens at her. They just told her that she was a piece of garbage who would never amount to anything, and they would go to her, crawl into a hole, and let herself die. Tears start to well up in her eyes, and her forehead had frothed with the stain of holding them back. Any second now, the dam would break. One boy punched her hard in the stomach. She fell down to the concrete floor, thriving in pain. Everyone else left the schoolyard and went home. She couldn't get up. She was too hurt. She cried for help, but no one was around to help her. She screamed louder and louder until her throat was hoarse and tears were pouring out of her eyes, but nobody answered her call. At that point, she couldn't hold back anymore. Her tear ducts opened and the twin streams stared down flowing from her cheeks as her breathing cycle degenerated into a series of erratic, hiccupy breaths. But she still couldn't stop, even though she could barely see the screen through her now-blurred version. vision, she kept going. Finally, she managed to pick herself up off the ground and finally began to walk home all alone. Nobody was looking for her. Nobody had noticed that she was gone. Nobody cared. On the way home, she just started walking across the bridge. She stopped midway and looked over the ledge. It was a hundred feet off the ground. She wondered if anyone would miss her if she jumped off and... That did it. That marked the end of her run. She couldn't muster up the strength enough to complete that thought before her quiet weeping erupted into a unrestrained sobbing. She slammed her laptop hard shut and crawled into the other side of the bed, collapsed face first into her pillow. As she cried hard, she put every ounce of energy into her sobs, hollowing into her pillow as if she was trying to stir out in slumber. The events harrowing their story had planned out, played back in her mind over again. Poor Kathy. She did try her best, but she still wasn't good enough. Why wouldn't anyone give her a chance? Because of you, she fought. You're the one who rode her that way. Her life is terrible and it's all your fault. You should be ashamed of yourself. As her body whacked, wrecked with sobs, she started building out hysterics apologies to the fictional characters in any state of mind. She would have had felt silly for being so guilty for even the plight of someone who didn't exist. At that moment, though, Kathy's sorrow just felt so real. As she cried, she started to feel compelled to continue, to keep her tears flowing for as long as possible. When her story started to fade out of her mind, her imagination responded by malfunctioning of her reasons to cry. Luna still isn't back, her brain told her. She's probably going to move out of the bedroom. She's trying to stay away from you because you're annoying and stupid. This, of course, not even remotely true. Luna was forced to stay after dinner so her parents could have a talk with her about her grades. But in the midst of crying, it didn't seem all too plausible. She, she, she doesn't l love me anymore. Luann bawled into her pillow, banging her fists into the mattress. Visions of Luna glaring down at her with a scorn and attempt to play her on a head on a loop. Then once that well dried out of visions that fade away, her thoughts and eyes drifted towards Mr. Coconuts, who was looking at down at her from his perch upon the dresser. In that moment, Luann swore she saw a tinge of hurt and ecstatic painted on the expression. Why don't you play with me anymore? She heard him say. Don't you love me? I thought I was your friend. I'm sorry, she howled at the top of her lungs, although her howls were muffled by her pillow, preventing from anyone else in the hall from hearing her. I didn't mean to. I'm still your friend. Don't leave me. For 20 straight minutes, her crying spell continued in much the same way as her mind bombarded her with the reminders of all her failures, regrets, and insecurities. Before long, her pillows were swooping wet and her eyes were aching from the effort. Eventually, though, she started losing stream, and the rush she got from her hearing her crying out her fainter and fainter. The eyes seemed to be running out of tears to shed, her unstrained bawling diminished into gentle sobbing, which diminished her even further into quiet sniffling. 
Once she had reached that stage, she pushed herself up and off the bed, shuffled over to the mirror. One glance at the glass revealed that she was an absolute wreck. Her hair was in a all skew. Her eyes were inflamed and swollen. Streams of mucus were cascading through her nose, and her blouse was as damp in ears. And yet she felt good, invigorated, as though a massive weight had just been lifted off her shoulders. In the past half hour, she had purged every free ounce of negativity from her body, cleansing and refreshing itself. As she gazed at their reflection, she had managed to form a small quivering smile. She then turned to her bed, reopened her laptop and banged down a new ending for a story. One boy punched her hard in the stomach, fell her down to the concrete thriving in pain. Everyone else left the schoolyard and went home. Everyone except for one boy who helped her up and walked her back home. He actually said he enjoyed some of her jokes and that she shouldn't just give up just because people didn't like her. But he also told her that it was okay for her to cry, to which she did all the way home. Being sad, he has said that is part of life. Everyone has their low moments. Sometimes you just has to have to embrace it in order to move on. The end. Moments after she finished the story, she hit the save command. She heard a click and the doorknob shifting. The door creaked open to reveal Luna. Hey sis, just want to know if you... Luna gasped upon catching a sight of Luna's rag tear-stained face. Whoa, you okay? Luann took a deep breath, wiped away the remaining tears lingering on her face, and uh, got off the, from the bed and turned to face Luna with a grin. Yep, never been better. She then gave Luna a peck on the cheek and skipped down the hall towards the kitchen, intent on finding something to snack on. From that day forward, Luann had a ritual that she practiced every couple of months or so, Call it a purge or a cleansing. Whenever she felt like life was weighing down on her, she'd give herself a half an hour to cry everything out of her system. It was odd and seldom to talked about it to everyone else, but it worked. Even for her clown has to cry every once in a while. And that, my pretties, was Cleansing, a Loud House fan fiction written by Mr. Tie-Dye. Um... My final thoughts on this story? Well, I honestly really like this story. I mean, this story is involving Luann, you know, feeling upset that she has to let out what's in her system from, you know, all the shit that she's been dealing with. That is honestly a really good concept. I can honestly see this being a Loud House episode, but you know, this is uncharacteristic of Luann to be crying like that. Because if you all know the show... Luann is usually the funniest one, and she's always making puns and jokes and stuff. But for her to break down and cry like she did in this story, it's uncharacteristic of her to do that. But this is done in a way that a lot of Loud House fan fictions don't really seem to understand. But this, honestly, I could definitely say I could see Luann doing that every once in a while. Because normally she doesn't cry or anything. She's usually, you know, always funny, making jokes and stuff. I mean, with that being said, I personally thought this was a pretty good story. I, it's a good story, I have to say. The grammar's really good. I personally was able to read this without a problem. It's a good story. I personally really like it. So, I guess with that being the case and with that being said, I could honestly see Luann going through something like this, but... With that being said and that being the case, I still really personally thought this was a good story. So with that being said and that being the case, uh, to Mr. Tie-Dye, awesome job with the story. I personally really enjoy it. So with that being the case and with that being said, I personally really enjoy it. So with that being the case and with that being said, I personally like this one. So... I guess with that being the case and with that being said, like I'm always going to continue to say, I'll leave a link in the description down below. So if you guys want to go check out this story, you can. I know it's been a while since I've actually did a Loud House story, but I'll try and get more into those in the future when I can. So there's definitely that. It's a good story. I personally really like it. So with that being the case and with that being said, what did you guys personally think of this story? Did you all enjoy it? Did you all not? Also, what we have done personally to help make this story a lot better, feel free to let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. 
I'm the Lion Queen. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And like I always say, this is just simply my own personal opinion. And if you disagree with me, that's perfectly fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these creepypastas. And this, well, it's not really a creepypasta, but uh, fan fictions and stuff. But we all respect our personal thoughts. I give this story a 10 out of 10. Well, it's a really good story, I could definitely see Luann going through something like this. And I honestly could see this being a real episode. So, with that being said and that being the case, what did you guys personally think of this story? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. As always, I'm, Lion Queen. I'm the Lion Queen. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you're new to my channel, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. Ring the bell for notifications to when I upload, so that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, if you happen to be wanting to follow me on Twitter, link to my Twitter account will be in the About page section so you guys can go follow me on there. Also, if you're interested in following me on DeviantArt, link to my DeviantArt will also be in the About page section so you guys can go follow that. Also, if you're interested in subscribing to my backup channel known as Miss Dark Shigo, link to that will also be in the About page section so you guys can go check that out if you haven't. And as always, that's pretty much all I have to really say. But if I'm missing something that I did not talk about, please let me know what it is in the comments below. So with that being said, if I'm missing something, please let me know what it is. But I want to give a big shout out to Mr. Tie-Dye. Thank you so much for, what, for, for well, pretty much letting me um, read um, this story. This was appreciated. I will definitely look into doing more of um, stories like this in the future. So that's pretty much all I have to really say. So with that being said, hope you have a good day, night, evening, or whatever. And I will be seeing you guys all in the next video. Peace out. And like always, roll the outro because I'm out. What's up, my pretties? It's the Lion Queen here. I want to appreciate you all for tuning into this video. And I do appreciate you guys supporting my video by giving this video likes and stuff. If you really enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe if you're new, ring the bell for notifications to when I upload so that way you guys will get updated for whenever I upload. If you want to follow me on Twitter or DeviantArt, feel free to leave, to leave a follow on those if you are interested in following me on those socials. If you want to support my backup channel known as Ms. Dark Shigo, feel free to subscribe to it as a link to that will also be in the about page section. And with that being said and that being the case, thank you so much for watching my pretties and as always, please stay pretty.